Trying to make an image of a black hole is, is probably one of the hardest things you can think of to do. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. We're trying to see the unseen. Even though it's never a good idea to bet against Einstein, it's always a good idea to test and verify. Shep's target is an area of our galaxy where scientists predict there is a supermassive black hole. Pulling away the dust and haze from the Milky Way reveals a cluster of stars zooming around its center. These stars can only have such tight, vast orbits if they are circling something with enormous mass, crammed into a very small volume. The best explanation? A supermassive black hole scientists have called Sagittarius A star. Based on this prediction, Shep is targeting the center of the Milky Way. And the galaxy itself presents the first obstacle. It's not straightforward to try to image the black hole in the center of our galaxy. To see it, you first of all have to pierce all the gas and dust between us and the center of the galaxy. And the best way to do that is to observe in radio waves, which very easily can see through all that gas and dust. Unlike optical telescopes, which only view visible light, radio telescopes can pierce the 26,000 light years of dust and gas that stands between Earth and the center of the Milky Way. But even with the most powerful radio telescope, Shep will struggle to image Sagittarius A. A black hole is the corpse of a giant star. Once the Colossus runs out of fuel, it loses the fight with its own gravity. The inner core starts to collapse, and the star explodes in a violent supernova. But inside, the surviving core keeps on collapsing to an infinitely small point called a singularity. This bends space so far that even light can't escape, forming a sphere of darkness called the event horizon. A black hole is born. Even though Sagittarius A star's event horizon is nearly 15 million miles across, it is also thousands of millions of millions of miles from Earth, creating a problem for Shep. It's equivalent, this is crazy to think about, but using your naked eye to see an orange on the moon. That's the level of magnification we need in order to pull this off. From the last decade, Shep has worked on an audacious plan. He's linked radio telescopes around the planet to form a network called the Event Horizon Telescope and point them at the center of the Milky Way at exactly the same time. With perfect synchronization at multiple telescopes like this around the globe, we should be able to make very crisp pictures of the region right around the black hole. The further these telescopes are apart, the more detail he will pick up. If they are spread strategically across the planet, Shep's network will be 2,000 times more powerful than the Hubble Space Telescope. But even with this much power, how can Shep make something out that, by definition, is totally black and emits no light? A black hole itself is invisible, but matter falling into it should reveal its secrets. Its intense gravity attracts interstellar gas and pulls it into a faster and faster orbit. As this gas nears the event horizon, the increasing gravity heats up the matter and it emits a glow. According to Einstein's theories, this will produce a circular ring of light which casts a shadow of the event horizon. It's a startling idea, but this glow is so faint, Shep can only see it 
if he uses two telescopes to zoom into a small section of the event horizon. So then you're effectively looking at a small swath of this image. So with one telescope pair, we can take essentially one cut through the shadow of the black hole. With many telescopes around the world, we can take multiple cuts through. We will be able to image this entire ring. Shep has enlisted radio dishes in California, Chile, Hawaii, Mexico, and Spain. But these telescopes are still not far enough apart to see all the detail of the event horizon. To do this, Shep will need data from a telescope at the most extreme place on Earth, the South Pole. And one scientist has the responsibility of bringing this telescope into the system. Dan Maroney is a veteran of Antarctic astronomy. At the South Pole, we'll be installing another mirror just like this. But we have to make sure that all the light that gets directed to it is hitting this spot. Dan and his team are constructing an incredibly sensitive receiver to attach to the South Pole telescope. Once in place, the network will span the globe and will have enough power to image the entire event horizon. This one sitting at the bottom of the Earth is really important to make sure that we can see as much detail as possible uh, in the black hole. Once built, it will take three days of solid travel for the team and the receiver to get to the pole. Once there, they will face a battle with Antarctica's extreme environment as they try and fit the receiver to the telescope. There's going to be a crane that they, they've brought down just for this purpose, and we will winch it up. We'll bring it onto the roof. We have to make sure this all works. But if things start to go a little wrong, yeah, there will be some added pressure on us to, to pull it all together. Hopefully, it will all go into place very nicely at the South Pole, and we'll be taking pictures with it. With the addition of the South Pole Telescope, Shep's network will truly span the planet. But to capture the image that proves black holes really do exist, he will still have one more massive problem to overcome. Shep's network stretches for tens of thousands of miles, but he must coordinate all the signals together within a fraction of an inch, or he'll end up with a fuzzy image. Over the last ice age, uh, as the ice receded, the Earth has begun to rebound a little bit. So over many years, the location of the telescopes actually changes a little bit. Even moving one of our telescopes by a millimeter is equivalent to shifting the entire focus of your telescope across the sky. To overcome this, Shep uses a vast supercomputer called the Correlator which constantly monitors the exact positions of every telescope in the global network. This correlator is really one of the most important parts of the Event Horizon Telescope. It is what takes all the data that we've collected around the world and combines it together with great precision. We create a data set that's equivalent to having a telescope as large as the Earth. And from that, we can make an image of a black hole. <laughs> 